presence of the Lord. We are we are closing uh, our our series of the word and prayer, the ministry of the word and prayer. Tonight I just want to share with you a few things and then we go. Hallelujah. Just want to show you steps step for prayer that brings results. That our heading steps for prayer that bring results. We spoke about prayer a lot. We, we shared about prayer. Even Mr. Tusi last week, he spoke about the relationship of the word and prayer. Wonderful message. Great message. Uh, God is raising soldiers in the house. Hallelujah. So, I want you to, to take your notes. I'm, I'm believing God that I won't take long. But if I take long, praise God. Hallelujah. It's, it's his time. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your word. I thank you. Oh, yes, you are the God who speaks. You are the God who speaks. Even tonight, might you speak to us while listening. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. We love you so much. This is your church. You are the one who gave birth to the church. We submit and surrender to you in the name of Jesus. Take over, Holy Spirit. Give us the now word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I can't hear your amen. Hallelujah. How many of you want to have answered prayers? Like when you pray, you want to be assured that your prayers are answered. Hallelujah. Everybody wants to experience those, those, uh, that life. You want to live a life of answered prayers. You want to know that after I've spoken to God, can you shift that fan a little bit? Uh, it's blowing my Bible. After, after I've spoken to God, things are going to happen. So, I want, to, I want us to just go through some few steps. We're not going to exhaust all of them. But I just want us to look at, at some few steps that, that will teach us how to get answers to our prayers. Hallelujah. And remember, one of the, number one step, just know that you cannot twist the arm of God to answer your prayers. Number two, God has already given you what you need. Hallelujah. God has what? He has already given you what? What you need. Hallelujah. Number one, understand your salvation. Write it down. Many of us do not understand our salvation. I can attest to this that the first six months when you were saved when you have received the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, you understood who you were. You had that zeal that, wow, God is here. I can feel him. And as time goes by, the spirit of familiarity takes over. You forget who you are and, you still, and yet you are still what? A Christian. Psalm 103 Verse 1 up to 4. It's one of my favorite scriptures. I love these Psalms. After the book of Genesis and Psalm 42, I think I love this one. Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 1 up to 3. We give you all the glory. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Key. Key number one of getting an answered prayer. You, not, you don't forget the benefits of your salvation. 
Hallelujah. Many of us have forgotten the benefits of salvation. You know, you cannot go and queue in the, on the line of those who cannot get because the queue is longer. So because everybody is there, you automatically believe that everybody who needs must go and queue on that queue of people who cannot get what they want. We cannot live, in other words, I'm saying, you cannot live by the beliefs and the perceptions of the world and forget who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. When you know the, the benefits of your salvation, your prayer becomes different. You don't pray, you don't pray a prayer filled with doubt. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all with his benefits. Why? David is commanding himself not to forget. Meaning, there is a possibility that you might live a life that you're not supposed to live because you forgot who you are. Am I talking to someone? The fact that you know that you are saved doesn't necessarily mean that you know what, who you are. That's the reason why in royalty, when the children grow up, they are taught how to live a royal life. Why? If they are not taught, they might live like a commoner. They might beg like a commoner. They might live the life anyhow like a commoner. But the Bible says that we are his royal priesthood. Meaning, everything that you have ever needed, your father has provided for you before you were born. Before you were even created. Your birth and your existence here on earth is not a surprise to God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm talking to someone. Your existence is not a surprise to God. God is not surprised that you are here on earth. Hallelujah. He already preordained you. Ephesians 2 10 says, We are God workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God has already preordained. Meaning, you are living a life of a finished script. In the script of God, you have already spoken to God. You have received what you need. Benefit number one. Hallelujah. I always give example with, 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 with children. When, you see, legal children, when, when they approach their parents, they say, you have money. Hallelujah. Go to that machine that gives you money. And put that card. And I need some. Because I need something. Believe you me. Even if in that card there is nothing. Because of the faith. That your child has shown in you. You will go and get that money. And provide. And you will be surprised. How did I do this for my child? So, uh, to, tonight, I, 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 I just want to simplify the word for you. How did I do this for my child? Only to realize that the love that you have for your child, you don't want to see your child suffer or lacking anything. You will go all out. Hallelujah. Do you think you love your children more than God loves you? How much is the love of God about you? You know, one of the benefits will God say, do not forget all his benefits. Number one, Number, he said, verse 3, who forgives all your iniquities? Many of us don't have the boldness to approach the throne room of grace because of the weight of sin. 
Hallelujah. Not that you are a sinner. You know, have you ever seen a person who is always apologetic? They didn't do anything wrong. Ah, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I, you know, I, no, forgive me for what? You know, they are, they live in a perpetual state of condemnation. They apologize before they do wrong. But in your salvation, in our salvation, there is the blood. Hallelujah. There is what? The blood of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that has cleansed you from all forms of unrighteousness. When you approach the Father in prayer, he is not looking at a pig that is dirty with sin. He's not looking, he's looking at someone who is ready to receive. But because of our faith, of our self-consciousness, than being conscious of what Jesus did, we pray prayers filled with unbelief. If it happens, a father, I understand that I don't deserve anything. Even if you don't do it, God, I will understand. I'm ready to accept my suffering. Because you said, we shall suffer here on earth. And I know that I will rejoice in heaven. Big lie from Satan. If ever you have said those words, reject them. Reverse them. Say, Father, I'm here on earth to have life and have it more in abundance. Why? Because Jesus Christ has done it all for me. So when you understand that your sins are forgiven, you have opened the door for answered prayers. Hallelujah. Are we together? Can you go to Matthew? To Matthew 21, verse 21, 22. Number three, prayer that brings results must be based on God's word. But, but the problem is one. Is God still speaking today? Yes. Whom, whom is he speaking through? You. One thing that we, we forget. John, Job 22 verse 28 says what? You shall what? Declare a thing. And it shall be what? Established. For who? For you. So a prayer that brings results. You start with what? With the, with the end. According to God, what you are about to pray for is done. The issue is how you receive it. Matthew 21, 22, 20, verse 21, up to 22, what does it say? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also you will say to this mountain, be removed and because you the sea, it will be done. 22. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you, you, you will receive. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Hallelujah. So, what is step number one? God does not believe in his word. God is his word. He knows that his word is done. He doesn't need to believe it. I'm not sure if I'm... A... Hallelujah. He is God. He, he, he doesn't need faith. So, if you believe in what God has said, the believing is us. So, if you believe and speak the word that God has said concerning what you are praying about, 
you are not only receiving the answer, you are also creating what that which did not exist before you pray. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? You know, do not pray for it because it exists. Pray for it because it exists in you. Am I talking to someone? If you can conceive it, if your spirit man believes it, is as good as done. What is left is for you to open your mouth and speak like God. And God said, let there be. Am I talking to someone? Because most of us, we pray right and confess wrong. Hey, I've prayed for their car. My name is to go lady at Ura. Yo, I am. Cars are expensive. I don't even know whether I qualify or not. Uh uh. You pray for the car, you believe God for the car, and nowadays car is expensive. You don't know whether you qualify or not. Which word must work in the spiritual realm? Am I talking to someone? After praying for the car, what do you do? If you have two garages like your pastor used to have, there was only one car in the other garage, what do you do? You go and clean the other garage. You remove everything. Create space. For the other. That's what I did before the bus came. I even took the horse pipe. Cleaned the hardcore horse pipe. It, I took the broom. We cleaned the garage. It was speak and span shining. We cleared the space. When I was done, God said, No, the car that is coming is too big. Remove even these things. I called the guys who so were helping me to clean. Please come back with your biking. Take these things also. They took them. And after that, I took the picture of a bus, put it on the wall. I said, my, my car has arrived. According to me, it was as good as done. And what I had to do was just to wait upon the Lord, put my ear on the ground, and act when the time is right. Are we together? So release the word of God and act upon the word of God. Write it down. Act upon the word of God. Hebrews 4, verse 11 to 16. Somebody used to laugh at me a lot. I was still driving another car before I go to this other one with an emblem. They said to me, where is your car? I said, my car is, is at Mercedes Benz. They said, why don't you have it? I said, no. My time for collection has not yet come. I will go collect it. And by then, my salary was still way too low to even, to can even dream of a C-class. But they say, what are you driving? I said, no, I drive a Mercedes Benz. It's, it's, it's there, it's there in the garage. I confessed that until it came. Hebrews 4, 11 to 16. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same examples of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Check here. Allow the word of God to decipher your thoughts. Amen. 13. There's no creature, create, creature hidden from his, right, from his side, but all things are naked, open to the eyes of him who must give account. 14. Seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let check this. Let us hold fast to our confessions. For we do not have a high priest who cannot be who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all point tempted as one, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne room of grace, that we may obtain what mercy and find grace to help us in time of what need. 
So what is important? You hold fast your you hold fast your what? Your confession. What 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 is your language daily? You are believing God for a degree. You speak failure. You are believing God for marriage. You speak rejection. You are believing God for promotion. You speak condemnation. Ah, you know me. I, you know what I I know you can, you can never be promoted. These people, it's favoritism all the way. Can I tell you something? Where it looks like it's too difficult for you to be promoted, that's where God wants you. How will people know that he's God if there was no stumbling blocks? Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? How will people know that he is God if there were no stumbling blocks? How you want to fight, you want to win a battle without a war? Without a battle? You want to win a fight without a fight? Am I talking to someone? They say, this course is too difficult. You cannot pass it. I, I always say to people, if it's too difficult, it's excite me. Why? I, if it does not challenge me, I was talking to, to Mr. Shangani. I was telling him something. He said to me, no, it showed that God is there. If there is a challenge, it's because God is there. I said, no, you know what? I love this concept. If people can understand that challenges don't, don't re, doesn't mean the absence of God. Are we together? Challenges don't mean that God is not there with you. Challenges want to put you right when the will of God, so that you can say, when, when the results come, you'll be able to stand up and say, this is not my strength. This is not my wisdom. This is not my doing. Only God can do this and give him glory. Are, are, are we together? Are we together? So, how, how do you Even when it's difficult, declare it. I'm holding fast to my confession. There, there is a lady who came to me at work while we were still before lockdown. She said, Pastor, I, I'm struggling to conceive. I heard that you pray for people. He said, no, it's not me who do this. It's your faith. I prayed for her. After praying for her, I said, you are going to buy a court bed. He said, what? I want to do He said, no, 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 no. no you, you are not mad. You are going to buy a court bed. And going to buy baby clothes. No, I'm going to buy neutral clothes because I don't know whether it will be a boy or a girl. I said, no, what child do you want? I want a boy. I say, go and buy baby clothes, uh, clothes for a baby boy. And every time you go to put the, the, the court bed, have a conversation with your baby boy. As I'm talking to you, the boy is born. There is a boy child is born already. They, they, had, they said to her, they said to her, she has growth, she has growth, she, she cannot conceive in a womb. They need to operate her. I said, it's up to you. Do you believe in a spiritual operation or proper uh, uh, the operation from the doctors? She said, no, I believe you. I said, okay, go and take Holy Communion for seven days. She took Holy Communion every day for seven days. After that, she went for a scan. The growth were gone. There was no more growth. The blood of Jesus Christ has done it all. So, what do you do? The moment you start holding fast your confession, you are not only, you don't have to see it. You don't, you don't have to feel it. It must be here. Be pregnant with your answer. Feel it here. Be pregnant with what? With the answer to your prayer. And you, when you are pregnant, what do you do? You speak about your child all the time. You speak about what? Your child all the time. Pregnant people, they mind what they eat. They mind what they drink. 
They mind where they go. Where they go. I remember when we were pregnant, I said to my wife, you are not going home. Why? Because when you are carrying something that you are about to give birth to, it is your responsibility to give birth to, con- to maintain your conception until the time of giving birth comes. Hallelujah. And also, what do you do? I put, you act as if it is done. Where are you going? I remember when we were buying a house where we are living now, there were issues. So every Sunday after church, we said we are going home. We'll drive, make a turn to the house, slow down there, look at it, and pass. Every time after church, we went there, we said we are going home. We acted upon it. There was a time we went, we went to the house. The owners were there. He said, can we come in? They said, why? Said, we just, we just want to look at the house. He said, Father, I thank you for this place. On, the, on that time, the bank, the bank was telling me a different language. They were saying it's not going to work. On Saturday, we went to work, to church. There was a church house. We were painting the church house. The bank called me. Hey, Mr. Dagada, we regret to call to tell you that uh, it did not go through. I kept quiet. I said, this one, I'm not responding. They said, did you hear me? I said, I heard you. They said, do you understand? I said, no, I don't understand. I didn't want to agree with them. Because I understood the power of agreement. So I, I was careful of what, of what they want me to say. They said, did you hear me? I said, I heard you. Do you understand? I said, no, I don't understand. That, oh, oh, do you want me to explain again? I said, no, don't explain. It is, it is well. They put the phone down. It was on a Saturday. On Tuesday, I received a call. And Mr. Dagada, we have sent you a fax. It was the fax time with the document of the house. May you please sign and, and send them back to us. We'll send them to the deed office for registration. We signed. So, refuse to receive a report that does not match with what, which, with what you have prayed for. Any report that is not confirmed and affirmed by the word of God concerning your life, reject it. People might say you are crazy. People might say your head is empty. It's okay. Hallelujah. You act as if it is done. Number, number four, never allow doubt to creep into your mind. Doubt does not come through the voice of the enemy. Doubt might come through the voice of a person close to you. I remember when we were struggling to get a house, my father called me. He said, it is that the only house in Jobek. <laughs> Why don't you leave it and go for the other one? I said, I heard you, but no. Had I believed him, I would have shamed in the spirit of defeat. There are those people around you who will talk to you through their fears. Am I talking to someone? They, are to, they will talk to you through what? Their fears. They will make you understand the language of their fears. Huh? You mean you are going to buy that big house? I'm telling you, when you are dead. I'm telling you, you won't be able to buy a, a groovy, your coke. It's not going to happen because they are afraid. So never allow that. Can you go to, 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 to James 2? No, not 
not, not, not James 2. Let's, let's go to uh, uh, Second Corinthians. I just want to rush a bit. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to James. I, I'm, I'm avoiding to preach. I want us to have a conversation. Because it's important to know where, where do we get failure in our lives? Check this. Second Corinthians 10 verse 5. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Who does that? You. Hallelujah. It's not saying God will. Number one, it is you. You, you there are arguments that take place in, a, in, in people's thoughts. We saw, if, even, even when Jesus Christ was tempted, many of you that you don't know, the devil did not appear to Jesus Christ and said, if you are the son of God, he cannot do that. It is an it is argument that came through what? Thoughts. And Jesus Christ was able to counter those arguments with what? With the word of God. Hallelujah. So, every thought that comes to your mind, it must be countered with what? It must be cast down. Firstly, I speak out. Even when I... Even when I'm alone, my wife is used to it. For sure, for the first few years, she thought she married a crazy man, a madman. Now she realized that this man is talking to God. I will say, Satan, you are a liar. It's not going to happen in Jesus' name. I will speak out loud. I will hear the thoughts, but I will reject it loud. Satan, you are a liar. It's not going to happen in Jesus' name. For it is written, blah, 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 blah. It, it is written, whatever, whatever that is concerning, my, whatever that I'm praying. So I will confess the word until that argument in my mind is subdued by the word of God. Hallelujah. Choose whom you listen to. You see what? Casting down and bringing every thought into cave a captivity to the obedience of who? Of Christ. How do you do that? By the word of God. You cannot do this. Ah. Tavis, you are still too young to be a doctor. I, I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Where are you going to get where are you going to get the, 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 the mixer? My God shall supply all my needs. According to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. Who will promote you? God will send my destiny helpers. They will come. There is someone out there who will favor me. Why? It is written in Luke 2.52 that Jesus Christ grew in stature and wisdom with favor with God and who? And man. As I'm favored by God, I'll also be favored by who? By men. Therefore, what I'm praying for, if I cannot do it myself, God will send someone who will do it for me. Hallelujah. So, never allow any form of doubt, any thought that will counter what you're believing God for. If there are people who dream small, it's Christians. You know, I, know, you know, I just want to be realistic. Want to be realistic when? I mean, you are going, you are going to, to, to that building. In closing, even though I'm not yet done, when we're looking for a building, I told you the testimony maybe, I didn't tell you. Uh, it was the fourth week when we started the church. And the, and the biggest amount given on offering, it was about 100 and something. The church didn't have much in the account. And God said to me, 
announce that you're going to have a, next week we are moving to a building. I told you the story. I announced that next week we are moving to the building. We looked for the building. They said deposit 21,000. Did we have it? No. We called them. They said they need their deposit before you can move in. It's a Thursday. We promised people the building on Sunday. Even to this day, I don't know how that money came. All that I know is that we transferred the money. We secured the building. On Sunday, we were in this inside the building. One of the tricks that the enemy uses to discourage you is the word how. Am I talking to someone? Is the word how is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? The moment you dwell in that word, you are defeated. You must bring every thought into captivity to the what? To the obedience of Christ. What do you do? If I don't know how, my response is always say, it's none of my business. It's God's business. The how part is whose business? It's God's business. My responsibility is what? Believing that God will do it. When you have prayed, leave the how to God. Hallelujah. God has the ability to take you at the, to the right place and be at the right time. Once your mind, once every thought is captivated by the word of God, believe you me, you will wake up, bath, not knowing where you are going. And you'll find yourself at the right place, at the right time where your breakthrough is. And you're going to testify I did not know where I was going. I just found myself there. Why? That's, part, that's how God answers prayers. When Saul was going to Damascus, in his mind, he did not know that he was going to his conviction. He did not, that, so he did not know that his journey is somebody's answer. In his mind, he was going to attack. Whereas the church was praying. So anything in your life can look like it's going bad. But believe you me, as much as you have prayed, that bad might be a journey to your answer. Am I talking to someone? Just like, just like Saul. He did, not know, he did not know that you'll meet Christ on the way. Say my problems will meet Christ on the way. They will become my point of exaltation. Because Saul became the point of exaltation to the gospel. He wrote many epistles more than the disciples who walked with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? Do we continue? Many of us, we don't know how to use our vision. When I was still my first job in a contact center, I did something that I was, that was, that I was supposed to be fired. And I read, I read the Bible saying, Jesus is the rock that the builders rejected. I begin to visualize myself stuck in the rock in my workplace so that nobody can uproot me. 
disciplinary hearing was set. I didn't even get a final written warning. I deserve to be fired. That was in my other company. I refused to see myself fired. I saw myself stuck in the rock called Christ. And Christ was in my job. So how you see yourself after prayer is important. What do you see about yourself after you have prayed? Refuse to accept the now. Live in the future vision of yourself. In closing again, <laughs> when I was still a call center agent, I believed God that I would be a supervisor, an ops manager. Do you know what I did? We used to dress anyhow because we are not going to meet clients. After I started believing God for that, I changed my dress code. I went to work with my tie, my jacket and trousers. People said, yeah, this, this guy loves himself so much. I didn't tell them. Said, ah, this one, King Amola, this one loves himself so much. For the first six months, I was dressed up like that. I saw a post here in Alberton. I applied ops manager for prosecutions. I applied. First interview, I knew, I knew that I got the job. I was just waiting for the letter. And indeed, it was like that. So, begin to treat yourself like your answer. That, 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 that's what I'm saying. Behave like your answer. Am I talking to someone? Do, 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 whatever that you want to be, behave like that answer. And as you're behaving like an answer, keep on declaring the word of God. Keep on doing what? Declaring the word of God. Lastly of the lastly of the last. <laughs> Confess. Testify. Just say, I love what one of my children did. I'm not going to speak the name. She dreamed of a company and the interview started. <laughs> Interviewing employees. <laughs> Before the business can even start, the interviews were already started. People were being, were being interviewed for, for, for their jobs. This is what you're going to be. This is what you're going to be. This is what you're going to be. I'm, now I want to talk to you as an adult. You have a business. You want to hire a project manager. Do you have a list of people that you're going to hire? Do you have a list of companies that you're going to approach? You cannot wait until it happens. You make it happen. Because you have prayed and you are believing God that whatever that you have prayed for is your answer. I'm going to you to someone. Hallelujah. For the sake of time, I'll stop here. But I'm believing God that, God willing, I will, I, I will continue with the steps to prayer that brings results. Because these are, I'm trying to simplify it as much as I could with the word of God. But leave your answer. Be, be the life of your answer. I'm not sure if I'm making sense. Be the life of your answer. Behave like your answer. When I believe God that I'll be a pastor, guess where I was preaching? At work. At work, every time, lunchtime, whether there were two people or three people at work who will come in the prayer room and sit, Mr. Tusi, as long as there was a person, I will stand up excited, open the Bible, and preach the word of God. The next thing we were two, there were four, 15, 20, I begin to leave the answer that I believe God for. So who are you? You are not the person that you are in your mind. You are what the word of God says about you. You are more than a conqueror. For greater is he who is in you than the failure that is in the world. 
tell yourself that, that greater is he who is in me than, than the losing that is in the world. You say it is impossible for me to lose. It's impossible for me to lose. It's impossible for me not to succeed. I cannot give up. A lot of things have happened here in the church. It was a time that God said, stop all the taxes. That time I felt like I didn't, I didn't hear God. It was a time that I came to church. From being multitude, we were around six. My heart was so sore. And God said to me, do you trust me? I said, yes. He said, declare that you are preaching to the thousands. I said, I'm preaching to the thousands. Even to this day, I still believe that I'm preaching to the thousands. I'm not going to speak what I see. I'll speak what I see in the spiritual realm. I'm not going to declare what I see physically. I'm going to declare what I see in the spiritual realm. So who are you in the spiritual realm? The biggest problem is when your physical per person is the same as the one in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Who are you? Are you a defeated someone? Are you a sick someone? Are you a loser? You are not that. Do you think Jesus died on the cross so that you can suffer? No. It is not possible. You are the answer of the finished works of Calvary. Believe that. Believe you me, I'm not going to lie to you. Challenges will come that will challenge what you believe in. It's your responsibility to hold on to the weight. Hallelujah. Hold on to the word of God. No matter what, hold on to the weight. Don't let go the word of God. Hold on to Jesus Christ. Don't let go. No matter how painful or how challenging it can be, find yourself in the presence of God, declaring the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, in the midst of pain. And God will say to you, well done, my faithful servant. You have passed the test. Those who pray and give up, they will say, I've been praying for 20 years. God is not answering. No. God has answered you. You did not walk to your answer. Hallelujah. Can we stand up? I want you to declare. I want you to declare that I will hold on to the word. I want you to declare that I will hold on to the word. If there is something that you have to know, God does not have rejects. God does not have favoritism. There, are, there is no such, there is no people that God has chosen to suffer and others has chosen to enjoy life. No. We are all equal before the eyes of God. And God has a, has a big plan for your life. Only if you believe. There is one thing that I know. I've seen it. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. Nothing is impossible with God. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to begin to declare that I'm not the reject that I saw myself as. I'm not the suffering person that I saw myself as. I'm not someone who's waiting to die. I'm not someone who's forever sick. I'm not someone. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What Jesus Christ has died for on the cross is mine. Open your mouth. Begin to declare. 
Lord, we thank you. We bless your name, Lord. Come on, come on, talk to him. He loves you so much. Talk to him. Release your voice. He loves you so much. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name, Lord. Father, we thank you. That Heavenly Father, we are the answers to our prayers in Christ who strengthens us. We thank you, mighty God, that because you love us so much, you have, you have given us all things that pertains to life. I thank you, Father. I have a right because I'm the redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus has done it all for me. Come on, declare that that you are the redeemed of the Lord by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ has done it all for you. Declare the redemption. Declare the redemption. Declare the redemption. Declare the redemption. You are the redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I, w I, I, want, I want you to understand this as before we close. God is willing to use all his power to give you answers to your prayers. The first sign of that was his willingness to send his son on the cross to die. He's willing now to release all his power to give you answers to your prayer. When Daniel has prayed, an angel was dispatched to fight for him. I want to put it to you that Daniel did not pray for angels. But God released angels to fight for him. He did not pray for angels. Hallelujah. God is willing. I want, you to, I, I, I want to put you. He is willing to release his arsenal. To make things happen for your life. So when you pray. Believe. That it is done. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. Come on, come in. You can do better than that. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise as if he's done. Give him 